Come on, y'all happy to be in church? Come on, I am glad to be here this morning. Great day to be in the house of God. We got some pretty weather for a change. It is nice outside. I wanted to take the top down and just enjoy the the weather, but it doesn't work like that yet. You know, we do have plans of having a retractable ceiling eventually. Not not really. That would be cool. Uh, The second floor would be a challenge with that. That wouldn't really work that well. Uh, But I'm excited about today. I believe God uh, has a a word for all of us us this morning, some encouragement for us this morning, Um, you know, and and I believe he has some healing. I believe he has some joy in store for all of us. Um, You know, I love church. I'm just a church guy. I'm like, while Angel is up here uh, sharing, I was like, man, I just, this is like the dream, just being in church and being with people that we genuinely love and and uh, getting to worship him and just, uh, I love what God is building here at Purpose because we're just getting started, amen? Like, I'm so excited about all that God has in store for us as a church, for you and your walk with him. Um, and I'm excited because Purpose happens here, amen? It happens here. And uh, I've been enjoying this uh, series of messages, my church. Y'all enjoying that? Uh, it's been really good. And we only have one more and then it's summertime. Come on, I'm ready for some summertime. Uh, we're going to kick that off, like Angel said, on, on June 2nd. We got snowballs. Uh, and then we're going to break out the treat yourself cooler. How many of y'all remember treat yourself? You got to treat yourself. Uh, we're going to break out the freezer. That's we give out I, uh, ice cream, different ice creams every single Sunday. It just makes summertime fun, and I love it. And uh, I'm going to have to try to not to do that because I've been eating right. And treat yourself sounds like a bad deal for me. Uh, but but I, I know this, Jesus loves his church, amen? He loves the church as a whole. He loves all the churches across the world, all the churches in, in, in Baton Rouge. And, and, and I believe he has so much in store for us as a church. He has vision for the church. He has vision for Purpose Church. Uh, he, he says this in Matthew 16, on this rock, I will build my church. It's his church, amen? How many of y'all know when you own something, when it's yours, you take care of it, Right? No, nobody's touching what I have, what I, what I value. If it's mine and I value it, I'm going to protect it, right? He loves his church. And, and, and I know he has so much that he wants to accomplish here at Purpose. I believe he, and know he has some uh, work to do and things he wants to accomplish in your, in your life, in your walk with him, and the enemy can't stop it. Amen? I want to ask y'all something. I want y'all to be real with me this morning. Have y'all ever been in a situation where someone like brings their problem to you and they start telling you all about their problem, what had happened to them, what someone did to them and, and they kind of rope you in and they get you all fired up, right? Have you ever been in that situation? Uh, you're like, I can't believe they would do that. Like, OMG, that is terrible. And you start to get, you get mad. You're like, I'm so sorry. That is messed up. And you get so mad. You're like, I can't even move my mouth, you know? I'm just mad, you know? And you're just like... Ooh, I know they didn't just do that. You know, you like lace up the Nikes. We're going at them right now. Uh, years ago, um, um, there was this kid at, at the church we grew up at, and he called me because there was going to be a fight at McDonald's. And, and, and he, we weren't even that good of friends, but how many of y'all know you call the kid that got kicked out of the youth group if you're going to be in a fight, right? So he calls me, I go out there, I was like, what's up? You know, and there's like uh, me and four nerds and all these like gang members, and I'm like, What's up, guys? I mean, maybe we should be friends, you know? I like, ended up making friends. But, you know, uh, you, you're mad. You're fired up. You're, like, walking back and forth. Like, let's get them. We're going to get them. Come on, let's go. Somebody's getting it handled today. And then it comes time for the con- confrontation, and you're still fired up. You're like, hold me back. No, there's nobody to hold you back, but you're holding yourself back, right? How many of you have hold, held yourself? You're lucky. Somebody's, oh, nobody's back there. You're lucky. You're just lucky. You're not worth it. Uh, you know, but what do you have to say for yourself? You know, the confrontation comes. What do you have to say for yourself? And they say, well, would you like to hear some of the details that may have been left out of the version of the story that you heard? You know, the other person gives you uh, their side of the story. You know, they, they come uh, uh, and, and tell you their side. How many of y'all have learned that there's always two sides to a story, right? There's always two sides, and, and your, your perspective starts to uh, drastically change as you heard some key details that were relevant to the story. And you're like, oh, wow, I have a whole new perspective now. My mouth can move now. I'm not so mad because I've, I've heard your side of the story. 
You know, uh, perspective is a very interesting thing. It is fascinating. Uh, same situation, two different viewpoints, right? I mean, just perspective, it'll, it'll blow your mind. Uh, but today I want to talk to, some, to, to you about something that I feel uh, is so important. I feel like it's something that can uh, completely uh, change so many situations in our lives. It can help us to see things completely differently. Uh, you know, it's a perspective that I believe God is calling each and every one of us to. And it's a perspective that will take a lot of the anxiety and worry out of our lives. And it'll provide some peace. Uh, the title of today's message is, My Church Has an Eternal Perspective. Uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we love you so much and thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house. God, I pray for your presence to continue to be here, to, to minister to us, to help us, Lord. Father, I submit myself to you to be used by you and I pray that you'd speak through me and you would speak to all of our hearts, Father. I pray that we would all leave here challenged and changed. Lord, encourage us with your perspective, Father. We want to see this world through your lens, Father, through the eyes of Christ. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. An, an eternal perspective. You know, uh, we live in uh, with an eternal perspective when we live knowing that this time on earth, this, 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 this brief time on earth, it's, it's temporary. You know, heaven is, is forever. Uh, most often we, we think about what is seen and, and we think about and worry about what is temporary, what is, um, you know, uh, you know just, just for now instead of what is forever, what is unseen, what is eternal. Uh, an eternal perspective, it strengthens us and it, and it motivates us and it makes a difference uh, in life as we face storms because we will face storms, amen? It helps us uh, in those situations. Uh, Jim L. Elliott, uh, he's an, he was an American missionary, he says this, uh, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You know, uh, we have to keep what the Bible calls an eternal perspective. You know, we're just passing through. You know, life is, is just a mist. It's just a vapor. It's like poof, and then it's gone. Life is temporary. You know, if we get too focused on, on the happenings of earth, uh, we'll walk in, in what's called a spirit of fear. We're going to walk with a lot of fear. We're going to walk with a lot of anxiety. Our eternity and, and our eternal uh, home is it's heaven. Uh, you know, we have to be careful not to place all of our, our hope on the things of this earth. You know, or we'll get wrapped up on, on uh, you know, just everything working out here on earth. We get wrapped on on making sure everything's hitting on all cylinders here on earth. Uh, you know, sometimes things do work out here on earth. But oftentimes, and, and honestly, most of the time, they don't work out the way we hoped, the way we had expected, the way we had dreamed, the way we had, we had hoped for, planned for. The dreams, they don't work out quite like we had hoped. You know, our theology doesn't have to make everything work here on earth. You know, it doesn't have to work out perfectly. You know, sometimes things do work out, but often they do not. You know, our theology is that we know that our hope is in heaven. You know, heaven is our home. Amen. And that gives us so much peace. You know, I pray all the time that things will work out here on earth. I pray that things will work out for you in your life, your career, your marriage, your, your dreams, your hopes, your plans. And I pray all the time that they would work out the way I hope in my, in my life. You know, there's a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety surrounding, surrounding things working out for us in this lifetime here on earth. You know, the mindset and the perspective that helps us to never be controlled by that spirit of fear is that we have our hearts and our hopes set on heaven. It's having an eternal perspective. Amen? You know, we're going to consistently just feel this, this pull to, to put our focus and our attention and our perspective on, on, on things of this earth. You know, because it's what's seen. It's what's right in front of us. You know, the things that are happening in the here and the now. As we go through this, this life and the trials of this life, the problems of this life, the, the issues, we're going to consistently feel this pull to be distracted and, and to take our eyes off of Jesus. You know, the trials of this life, they're going to come against us and they're going to create a spirit of fear over and over. It's going to create a stronghold of fear. 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 3 says this, uh, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, 
they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that, it, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And I love this part. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You know, we overcome the enemy by taking captive every thought. Uh, making them, like making every thought obedient to Christ. Like, hold up, I'm taking that thought captive. I'm making it obedient to Christ. Uh, the weapons we fight with, they're not weapons of this world. You know, but the enemy, um, you know, continues just to come against us. You know, uh, there are, are, are mighty weapons that we have to use to come against these strongholds that, that we face in life. You know, we have the power to pull down strongholds. And you might be like, what's a stronghold? That sounds like a churchy word. That's, that he's speaking Christianese up there. What is he talking about? You know, a stronghold is an untrue thought that, that keeps us in bondage. It's a thought that is not true that keeps us in bondage. You're not good enough. You know, you, 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 you're a failure. You're, you're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. Uh, you're a disappointment to your family. You're, you're, you're just like your father. You're just like your mother. Uh, you're an addict and you will always be one. You're unlovable. Nobody loves you. Nobody's ever loved you. It's a stronghold. It's a thought that keeps us in bondage. Amen? And like maybe none of those related to you, but you can fill in the blank for yours. I want to give you a simple truth today. And it's one that you probably already know. Most of us probably already know this, but we don't always live up, um, you know, uh, live it out the way that we should, um, you know, in order to see that spirit of fear and that spirit of darkness and that spirit of death broken off of our lives. Second uh, Timothy 1 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So there is a spirit of fear. I think we can all relate to that. There's a spirit of fear, uh, you know, but God wants to give us a sound mind. Amen? How many of you are like, I need a sound mind. There's, there's a lot of like negative noise up here. I want to sound a solid mind. You know, a sound mind means you have the right thoughts. It's sound. It's stable. It's right. You have the right thoughts. You have the correct thoughts. You know, uh, the, the thought that we can defeat the enemy in Jesus' name. That's a correct thought. You know, the thought that we're, um, you know, that if, if we get too wrapped up or, or enamored with uh, or, or too focused with the things of this earth, the, the concerns of this temporary wor uh, world, it's going to destroy us. You know, in the Gospel of John, half the book of John is about the crucifixion of Jesus, the final weeks leading up to his death. Uh, and, and resurrection, you know, uh, he's, he's uh, talking all about the cross. And the disciples, they don't like that. They don't like it because they really thought he was going to build a kingdom here on earth that they got to be a, a part of. I'm on the ground floor of, of his kingdom. And the disciples, uh, they're getting discouraged. Uh, Jesus can see it. He can see the discouragement. He can see the darkness uh, in their minds. And, and he can see the spirit of fear on their lives. And he speaks these words to them. John 14, 1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I wouldn't have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And Jesus says, hey, I know you're discouraged. Guys, I know y'all are discouraged, but listen, I have something that will encourage you beyond anything else. He sees that their, their thoughts are in trouble. The disciples, their thoughts, their mind space, their head space, it's in trouble. And, and he redirects them to thoughts of heaven. You know, they're in trouble on earth, but he doesn't say, hey, I'm gonna pray for you. You know, hey, I'm just gonna pray for you. He points them to heaven. He points them to eternity. Hey, I'm not just gonna pray for you. I'm pointing you to your eternal uh, reward, your eternal life. And he's, he's helping them to develop this perspective and hold on to this eternal perspective. And it's important for all of us to understand and to learn this today, that while uh, we are believing for things on earth, and this is, there's nothing wrong with having hopes and dreams here on earth, um, you know, uh, you know and, and believing God for, for him to move. I'm believing God for, I'm believing that he's going to move. I believe he's going to turn things around. I'm believing for miracles and, and I have some hopes. We still must have the perspective that Jesus is and has prepared a place for us in heaven. He's preparing a room for you. 
the perspective that we need to have today and that every believer needs to have and live with and operate in is an eternal perspective. Amen? You know, too many of us, we have our eyes fixed on variables. Variables are things that, you know, like, like they're fic- fickle. You know, they're, they're, they're irregular. They're, they're shifting. They're wavering. Like the stock market is up and down, up and down. It's wavering. It's not something steady, not something solid that we can count on. You know, in, instead of the one thing that is sure, that, that is for sure, and that is our eternity with him in heaven. You know, we fix our eyes on whatever the current problem is, whatever the current situation is, whatever the current drama is, but our problems, they will always vary. Amen? But when we fix our eyes on God, um, you know, that, that's the one. He's faithful. Amen? You know, everything may, may not work out here on earth, uh, and likely everything will not work out the way we, we, we plan and hope, uh, but we can change our perspective, and that changes everything. You know, for most of us, um, we're getting the best version that earth has to offer. You know, here in America, I mean, uh, and maybe you're like, yeah, right. But truth is on our worst day, 99% of the world would trade spots with us in a heartbeat. You know, if we're not careful, we get spoiled and we get so focused on, on the wrong things. And that just brings destruction to our lives. Uh, so I want to give you three truths that will help us to gain an eternal uh, perspective today, an eternal perspective. Amen? Are y'all with me this morning? All right, all right. Number one, uh, focus my eyes on heaven, not on earth. You know, uh, focus or refocus your eyes. Refocus our eyes on heaven. You know, Jesus teaches uh, in Luke chapter 21 uh, about the signs of the end times. You know, he says that uh, in, in the end of our time on earth, on the, in the last days, things are going to get really bad. They're going to get really bad. Uh, and then he says in verse 28, uh, Luke 1, uh, 21, 28 says, uh, when these things begin to take place, uh, stand up, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He says, lift up your head, lift your head towards heaven. Your redeemer is near. Um, you know, I, I know I can get like so discouraged and angels usually the first one that notices and, and I, I guess I'm not good at hiding my emotions. I wish I was. I don't have a, a good poker face. Like, you know exactly what I'm feeling typically. Um, but, but I do this thing apparently when like just the, the you know, what hits the fan and you're just like, ah, like I just do this, like, which is dangerous because of, uh, I don't know if you're a physics guy, but inertia, you know, I have an oversized head. And so if I drop, drop my head, it's like risking breaking my neck. Keenan knows he cuts my hair. He's like, dude, like, I'm gonna start charging you by the hour. But like, we have to keep our eyes lifted towards him, towards heaven. Don't get discouraged by the things of this world. Don't look down, look up because the things of this earth are temporary. We have to be heaven focused. We have to learn to keep our eyes up and our eyes on him. Amen. I mean, the, the, the cares and the worries of this life, it'll make us drop our head in discouragement because we're so focused on variables, but we lift our eyes to heaven and it changes our perspectives. I hope that this is temporary. I serve the creator of heaven and earth. Sometimes I'm like, what are you doing, Chad? Like you are serving the guy that created that and created that and created that. Like he's got this. Keep our eyes focused on heaven. Uh, Revelations 12, 11 says, uh, and they have defeated uh, him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And I love this part. It says, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. You know, this is how we overcome Satan in our lives. You know, it says here in Revelation, they didn't love their lives so much. And this is key. And it's something for us to get and to hold on to. You know, they weren't afraid to die because uh, they knew their life wasn't about living here. It was about eternity. Our lives are about eternity, pointing others to Jesus. It's about something bigger than the right now. You know, so often, our focus is, is wrong. It's just wrong. Uh, we have to go through life looking up and not looking around. Amen? Got to focus, uh, focus my life on the unseen uh, and not the seen. You know, we have to have a life plan. Got to have a life plan. Got to have that. You have to have, have a purpose plan that isn't all about what we see or what's right in front of us. Uh, you know, we have, a, a, have to have a life plan, you know, and it's all about moving the kingdom of God forward. And it's all about populating heaven. I know that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. 
Um, you know, it's, it's all about that. And I believe that should be all of our perspective. You know, the motivation for, um, you know, promotions or, 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 or you know, advancing in our jobs or, 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 you know, doing everything for the glory of God. It's all about advancing the kingdom of God uh, and populating heaven. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 18. Uh, this is a lot of verses, but luckily there's no crazy words like Angel read last week. Um, like when she was reading that, I was like, I'd probably drop the mic and run out of here like a scared little girl. Uh, she killed it last week, didn't she? Come on, Mother's Day message. Did a fantastic job pronouncing all those names. That's all I got out of it. I was like, oh my gosh, reading can be done. It says this, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but our life is at, is at work in you. It is written, I believe, therefore I've spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus uh, from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and, uh, and present us with you to himself. All of this for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, but so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is is eternal. Come on, that is so encouraging. Amen? You know, Paul had more than enough reasons to complain. How many of y'all like complainers? Like Danny and I were talking just before service, like complaining. Like nobody likes to complain. Or Paul, he could complain. Like it's like, okay, dude, complain away, man. Like he could have complained. He could have quit uh, and stopped focusing on, on heaven. I mean, the man was brutally beaten, uh, stoned, shipwrecked. You know, there's, there's, there's not many that can go through all of this and have that kind of victory, you know, but this is what God wants for all of us. You know, Paul wasn't wanting God to just fix it all right now. He's just focused on what's coming. You know, the truth is that the Lord will raise him. You know, uh, what is unseen, that is eternal. Amen? What is unseen is eternal. And Paul's able to say in Philippians 1.21, uh, and I love this, for me to live is Christ and to, to die is gain. Right, so let's adjust our perspective. You know, I believe these words, you know, that, that they are true, that they can be true for our lives too. Um, you know, and, and, and I want to align, and, and we should all align our lives with the truth of God's word. To live is Christ and to die is gain. It's almost like Paul was untouchable. He's like, you can kill me and I'll be in heaven or I can stay here and I can spread the word of God. Like, like it's like you can't hurt him. How many of y'all know it is scary to fight someone that has nothing to lose? Like I would say, like, you never want to fight an ugly dude because that dude has nothing to lose. Oh, I'm going to mess your face up. My face is already messed up. Like, Paul, like you couldn't hurt him. You could kill him. Good. You could not kill him. Good. Untouchable. Matthew 6, 19 says, don't store up treasures on earth where the moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where the moths and rust cannot destroy and the thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. When we're focused on the kingdom and, and, and maybe we're on an outreach and we're just loving and serving broken humanity and pointing them to Jesus our mind is so far away from the problems and the troubles that we face. You know, if you're like going through discouragement 
and loneliness, man, there's nothing like extending some love, the love of Jesus to others to help you forget about your personal problems when you're pointing people to Jesus. And that's what Paul's secret was. You know, when we live um, for the treasures of heaven, our attitude about the earth, it will be changed completely. Amen. I hope y'all are getting something out of this this morning. Final thought is this. Focus my heart, my heart on faith, not fear. So like some questions, like how do we get there? You know, how do we get there? How do we focus on faith instead of fear? You know, how do we break that spirit of fear? Uh, Psalms 34, 4 says this. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. So we pray and he answers us. Uh, Psalms 119, 81. Uh, my soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. He's calling us out of a spirit of fear and into faith, faith in him. You know, what fear in your life? You know, just some self-reflection. What fear in your life has you bound right now? Come on, we all have it. And, and you may not have it for a moment, but it's coming. You know, we have that thing that kind of ebbs and flows. Like sometimes mine is, is, is past uh, failures and, and, and insecurities that were in, planted in me when I was just a little kid, you know, and it, 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 it keeps you in bondage. It's a lie. And if I told you what mine is, you'd be like, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, when I was a kid, I, I failed a lot in school. I, got, I had a school that kicked me out after a week, and it wasn't because of behavior. It was like, you're just not blank material. There wasn't a cuss word. It was the school name. <laughs> That'd be messed up. You're not. Like, you're nothing. You're, uh, yeah, anyway. I almost filled in the, what the possible beep could have been. But, you know, that, 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 that lie that is planted in our hearts at a young age and then it haunts me to this day. Sometimes I think I'm just stupid. You're like, Psh, yeah, right. We know how smart you are. Again, look at the size of your head. Like there's some brain matter up there, dude. Uh, and my mom's lied to me since I was a little kid. We had your IQ tested and you tested near genius. But these fears can come in and they bind us. And you have to notice what they are. And, 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 you know, insecurities, they're significant. It's one of the biggest attacks that the enemy brings to our lives. And it, I'm not alone in that. I was just transparent with my only, the one only insecurity that I possess as a human being. That's a joke. That's a joke. Obviously, I'm insecure about the fact that I can't wear hats. But what fear has you bound right now? I'm not alone. We all have them, and they're not fun to admit. I wish I could stand in front of you and, and be like, I have confidence that I'm the smartest human being on the planet. But th we all have insecurities. When we're honest with them, we can identify them, and God can help bring freedom from them. You know, what, what fear in your life has you bound right now? What fear have you been facing? What is that fear that rears its ugly head and continues to, to hold you hostage? You know, I believe whatever that fear is that's been controlling you, I believe you, you can let it end today. Amen? I believe it can end today. You know, we're going to close in prayer. And, you know, I believe the power of God is in this room. I believe the power of God is in this room. His presence has been here since the worship team start, first started playing. And I believe that power of God has the, has the power and the, the authority is there to break those fears off of our lives and to replace it with faith, to replace it with an eternal perspective. Amen. And so we're going to close in prayer. We're going to close with worship and you know, these altars are always open. We have people ready and wanting to pray. And I encourage you, whatever that fear is, whatever that thing is that continues to hold you back from the call of God that is on your life. And I know how it is. You count yourself out. Every environment like this, you've always counted yourself out that I'm talking to everybody else except for you. You have a call on your life. The Lord created you with a plan and purpose. It doesn't matter what your failures have been, what your track record has been. He has a plan and purpose 
that he's ready to activate in your life. Do y'all believe that this morning? He loves you. He values you. And he has uh, a place for you in the kingdom of heaven to advance the kingdom and to point others to Jesus. And I want to remind you, Jesus was so transparent with us uh, in the word of God. It says, in this world, you will have trouble but I've overcome the world. In this life, you will. We will continue to have trouble and disappointments and and failures and mistakes, but he has overcome the world. So our encouragement this morning, if you don't hear anything else, as we adjust our perspective to have an eternal perspective, to put it very plainly, you may face a trouble, but your hope is in heaven. Amen? You may uh, face some discouragement, But when you die, you're going to heaven. Amen? And that is forever. Amen? Everybody say forever. It's a little movie reference. Let's all stand up. I want to pray for you this morning. And as we close in worship, if you if you're like, hey, I, I'm ready, I, I, I'm ready for freedom. I don't want to be bound to this anymore. I don't want I don't want to face these insecurities anymore. I don't want to live my life in fear any longer. I encourage you, take that step and get prayed for. Amen. Get prayed for. Allow God to do a work in your heart and draw the line in the sand and say, No, you know what, enemy, no more. You will steal no more days from me. Because cause, cause I'm done with those fears. I'm stepping into faith and I'm stepping into an eternal perspective. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. And I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. God, I pray that you would um, do a work in all of our hearts this morning. Whatever that thing is, Lord, I pray that you're speaking to hearts right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you would speak to hearts this morning. Reveal, uncover those fears, those things, those doubts, those insecurities. And Lord, I pray that you'd help to identify them so they can be taken down and destroyed and replaced with faith, Father. Faith this morning, Father. Freedom this morning. Father, we love you so much. And I ask that we would all have a fresh, new encounter with you this morning, Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you're here this morning, you've never said yes to Jesus. You've never made that decision to place all of your trust, all of your hope in him and invite him into your heart. I want to give you that opportunity this morning. Or maybe it's a rededication. Hey, I prayed and then then life kind of came in and just redirected me. And I need to rededicate my heart to Christ this morning. I just want to lead you in prayer this morning. Uh, Let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. You died on the cross. You paid the price for my sin. You paid the price for my sin. Give me a fresh start. Give me a fresh start. A new beginning. A new beginning. I give my life to you. I entrust my life to you. Give me an eternal perspective. Give me an eternal perspective. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all give God a hand clap. Come on, we love y'all so much. Let's worship.